When my father died very suddenly in 2007, I was, uh, oh, I just sort of fell apart how I was feeling. I was, you know, very full of grief and full of pain, and the hawk was a way of escaping from that. I wanted to be this solitary, self-possessed creature that was free from hurt and grief and could sort of soar. The most beautifully designed creatures, um, those huge dark eyes that can see more colours than we can, um, just the sort, of, the sort of engineering of it, their airframes and their, their feet and feathers. And just their spirit, I mean, you know, it's, it seems an odd thing to say, but you can feel a falcon spirit when you sit near it. The American writer Steve Bodio has a wonderful description of falconry. He says it's um, learning how to be polite to a bird. And that really captures it for me. It's a very equal relationship in many ways. You know, the bird is completely free when it flies. If it, uh, if it decides to fly away, it will. That's the moment that your heart is always in your mouth because this is the moment where all the work and all the patience and all the love that you've put into this animal could be taken away in an instant if it flies away. When you've trained your own hawk, it's much more complicated and emotional because part of you is, is with that bird when it flies. And it's very transporting, you know, you feel almost as if it's you that's doing that, that flying. Um, and there's nothing like it really. The success of Ages for Hawk has been an extraordinary surprise to me. When I finished writing the book, I thought, this is a weird one. I don't know if anyone's going to read it. But I've been terribly wrong. I've met readers all over the world whose losses have far surpassed mine, and they seem to find something in my book that gives them solace. That has been very humbling. In the old legends, the old classical traditions, you, you need a spirit to accompany you to the other side and to come back with you, and that was my hawk.